Nodal analysis is a technique used in circuit analysis that lets us find node voltages around complex circuits. It is extremely useful when resistors are not in parallel or series, so we can't simplify it easily. So let's go over the background theory behind nodal analysis. First of all, we have Kirchhoff's current law, which states that the sum of currents entering a node equals the currents leaving the node. By using Ohm's law, we can rewrite the current as the voltage drop across the resistor divided by the resistance of the element. When performing nodal analysis, you need to follow a series of steps. Firstly, label the nodes. Secondly, we need to pick a reference node that will be our ground node for all our calculations. The third thing we need to do is label current directions. Apply KCL at each node. The fifth step is applying Ohm's law to rewrite the equations and then solving them using matrix form. So now we're going to look at an example of how to perform nodal analysis on a circuit. Using this circuit here, we want to find voltages V1 and V2. Okay, so the first step in nodal analysis is labeling nodes. And as you can see here, we have node 1 and node 2 representing the two voltages we want to find, and node 3, which we've picked as a reference node. The third step in nodal analysis is labeling our current directions. For currents like I3, which we're unsure which way they're going to flow, it doesn't really matter which way we draw them, just so long as we keep them constant through all our calculations. Step 4 of nodal analysis is applying KCL to each of the nodes. We can see that at node 1, we have I1 entering the node and I3 and I4 leaving. Similarly, at node 2, we have I3 and I2 entering a node, but I5 is leaving the node. The last step of nodal analysis is solving the equations using Ohm's law. Using the fact that we can rewrite the current through an element as the voltage drop across that element divided by the resistance. We can rewrite these equations by moving all of the variables onto one side and keeping the constants on the other. So we can now put our equations into matrix form, as shown by the augmented matrix here. We can calculate our determinant A bar, and also the determinants delta 1 and delta 2 by using Kramer's rule. So we can now solve for our voltages V1 and V2. Now because of the lengthy algebra used in this process, we're going to check our answers in Multisim just to make sure that they're correct. So I've just got the circuit built up in Multisim, and as you can see, the two voltages we're getting here are pretty much exactly the same as the ones we calculated. So in case you forgot, here's a summary of all the steps you need to do nodal analysis. 